Okay, so over the last two units, you've learned two very handy techniques. One, if you want to find out how much the temperature changes by, how many joules you need to make that temperature change happen, you use the equation Q equals MC delta T. And as you just saw in the last topic, if you want to find out how many joules are required to undergo a phase change, you use Q equals mass times heat of fusion or Q equals mass times heat of vaporization. But what if you want to find out how many joules are required to raise the temperature from below a phase change temperature to above a phase change temperature. What do you do then? You combine them. Here's what I'm talking about. How many joules are required to heat 100 grams of water, solid, from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius? You might want to say, well, that's easy. Q equals MC delta T. So I take 100 times 4.18 times 130 degrees. But you can't do that. You want to know why? couple reasons. First of all, between negative 10 and 120, there are two phase changes. At zero, you've got melting, so you need heat of fusion. And at 100 degrees, you have boiling, so you need heat of vaporization. The other problem is that the specific heat of water, liquid water, is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. If you've got solid or gaseous H2O, ice or water vapor, you're talking about a specific heat of 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's right. Ice and water vapor heat up at twice the rate that liquid water heats up. So you've got all these things working against you. But don't worry about it. You can still do this kind of problem. We're below the freezing point to above the boiling point. So we're going to carry this out in five steps. Step one, heat it from minus 10 up to zero. That uses MC delta T. Two, melt it. That uses heat of fusion. Three, heat it from zero degrees to 100 degrees. That requires MC delta T. Fourth, boil it. That requires heat of vaporization. And finally, fifth, heat it up from 100 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. That uses MC delta T. There are five steps to solving this problem. Step number one, how many joules are required to heat the 100 grams of solid from minus 10 up to the melting point of zero degrees Celsius? So for this, we use Q equals MC delta T. Now the mass of water is 100.0 grams. The specific heat of ice is 2.09 joules per gram degrees Celsius times a temperature change of 10.0 degrees Celsius. And that comes out to 2,090 joules. Now that's the amount of joules it takes just to heat it from the starting temperature to the melting point. 2,090 joules to get that job done. Now that we've got it to the melting point, we got to melt it. Now remember, temperature remains constant during a phase change, so we can't use MC delta T because there's no delta T. So we have to use M times heat of fusion since we're melting it. So to melt it, Q equals mass times heat of fusion. We're still dealing with 100 grams of water. The heat of fusion of water is something very nice. Take away 334 joules per gram and what you get is ice. So notice I don't have any degree Celsius in there. It's because the temperature is not changing. So 100 times 334 is 33,400 joules. And that's how many joules are required just to melt it. 33,400 joules. On top of the 2,090 we used to get it to melting in the first place. All right, now your ice is completely melted. You've got to heat it up to the boiling point. Say our ultimate goal is 120 degrees, but boiling point is in between those two temperatures. So we have to find out how many joules are needed to get it from 0 to 100 degrees. Mass is 100.0 grams. The specific heat of liquid water, which is what you have between 0 and 100, is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius times the 100 degrees Celsius temperature change. And when you multiply all these numbers together, you get 41,800 joules. That's on top of the 33,400 joules it took to melt it and the 2,090 joules it took to get it to the melting point. Okay, now we've heated up to the boiling point. Now what do you got to do? Boil it. 
Again, temperature remains constant during a phase change, so we have to use Q equals mass times heat of vaporization. The mass of water is still 100.0 grams. The heat of vaporization, the cost of doing business, 2,260 joules per gram. When you multiply these two numbers together, you get 226,000 joules. So far, this is the big player, boiling, because look at that heat of vaporization. That's a huge amount of heat. 226,000 joules to boil it off. Now that it's completely boiled, we can do the final step. Go from 100 degrees Celsius up to the final temperature, our target temperature, 120.0 degrees Celsius. The mass of water, still 100.0 grams. Now this is the specific heat of what phase? Let's see. Here was a solid, 2.09. Here was a liquid, 4.18. Remember we said the specific heat of gaseous H2O is the same as solid H2O. 2.09 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And how many degrees Celsius we were raising it? Well, if we want to go from 100 to 120, that's 20.0 degrees Celsius. When you multiply all these numbers out, you get 4,180 joules to get it the rest of the way. Great! Now what? Well, if we want to get the total joules, what we have to do is add them all together. So let's do that. It took 2,090 to get it to the melting point, plus another 33,400 joules to melt it, plus 41,800 joules to get it to the boiling point, plus 226,000 joules to boil it, plus 4,180 joules to bring it up to its final temperature, and that gives us a total number of joules, 307470. <clears throat> but ladies and gentlemen, our job is not done yet. You see, when adding numbers, you have to round to whichever place is the least precise. So let's see which place is the least precise. Starting from the top, this goes to the tens place. This goes to the hundreds place. Hundreds place is least precise. Hundreds place. Thousands place. That's the least precise. Tens place. So thousands place is the one that went out the least far. So we have to round our final answer off to the nearest thousand joules. Three, oh, seven, zero, zero, zero. And that is the number of joules it's going to take to get the job done. So whenever you want to heat the temperature from below a phase change temperature to above a phase change temperature, you have to take into consideration different specific heats and the heat of the phase change that comes in between those two temperatures.